as you dream by the window, bewitched by a star. Are you angel or devil? I wonder what you are. Kathy, oh, Kathy, oh, strange Sister-in-law bought a new girdle, the Rams won the night game, and George Washington crossed the Delaware. And where have you been? Playing polo. What else is new? You hear about the layoffs? Are you starting your Christmas rumors again? Harry Johnson. Oh, yeah, hello, Jed. You got that layout, huh? Sure, those are our measurements. 44, 22, 36. Sure, she's intelligent. The 44 is her head. OK, thanks. The garbage that man prints. I hear they might lay off flow in production. Can't fire me. My creditors won't permit it. No kidding. Twelve. Then I got scared just then. In ten seconds, I lost the house. Helen is telling the kids I can't afford what they need. And I'm on Nowhere Street without a shave. Oh, come on. That won't happen. Yeah, I know, but isn't it funny how fast pictures go through your mind? What's the trouble? No trouble. O'Rourke just ordered me off the set. Get the shot yourself. But, Billy, that picture's scheduled for the Sunday Times. You never saw such a tantrum. When I showed her that thing, she threatened me with a pair of scissors. But we still need the picture. Where are my cigarettes? You quit smoking yesterday. Oh, yeah. I'm not going up against her again alone. Ben will go with you. He has no family. Me? I'm a well-known coward. <sighs> All right. Come on. Boy, I'd like to belt her one. Hey, there's a law against hitting actresses. Legally, they're considered women. I'm ready for O'Rourke. A little I'll to the it. left. Now hit number three. Hey, Mike. I right, flooded out. Be nice. Take that away. How's your golf game, Mike? Don't schmooze me. She's murdered today. Besides, we're ready for her on the set. We like scenery. We'll wait. I love you, Harry. Go away. Miss O'Rock. Ready for Miss O'Rock. She'll be right out, Mike. All right, close the doors. Light them, fellas. Now, Kathy, when you come out of the closet, look off camera right, right at your Aunt Harriet. Would you like a rehearsal? No. I'd like to run it again, sir, for lines. I know my lines. Well, if you don't mind, Kathy, I'd like another go at it. We rehearsed it twice. Do we have to do it again? Now, Kathy, darling, don't get upset, I'm dear. I'm not getting upset. I just don't want to do it again. But, darling... Uh, come on, let's try it without another rehearsal. You'll be all right, Collingwood. Thanks. All right, hold it quiet now. This is picture. Who do you have to know to get out of this business? All right, let's have it quiet. We're rolling. Settle down. Speed. Action. All right, I know you're in there. Come on out. How many times have I told you to stay out of this room? Please don't get angry. I just come up here to be alone. For heaven's sakes, why? Makes me feel better. Her dresses are still there. Sometimes I brush up against them. They make sounds, like the sounds of her. Well, let's not talk about that now. Why don't you go outside and play? Oh, I don't want to. I've got to grow up. I have to take her place. You said so yourself. That's why I sit with her dresses. 
I've got to love them as much as she did. More than anything. They're all I have left. Cut. That was fine. Print it. I told you we didn't need another rehearsal. Okay, new deal. Oh, Miss Harriet. Yes. Oh, I want to give you Kathy's changes in the next scene. Fine, you go rest now, darling. Strike the lights. Clear the set. Let's move the camera over here. Who are you? Harry Johnson from Publicity. We've met. I hate publicity. So do I. But keep it a secret, will you? What are you doing here? Can't you see? I'm making something. I think it's going to be a dragon. Ah! I goofed. Looks like a kangaroo. Why do I always get a kangaroo when I try to cut a dragon? Well, back to the old drawing board. I wonder what went wrong. I drew the outline, right? See? Maybe it's the way I cut it. Yeah. You try. Come on. Come on. Steady now. Cut straight. Expecting maybe a kangaroo? <laughs> Come in, Billy. Mr. Blair's a friend of mine. Hi. We just want one picture, Kathy. It'll only take a minute. Well, I won't do it. And I won't be in that stinking Christmas parade. I hate it. And I hate all those people. Now get out of here. Get out! Take that thing with you. Now, just a minute, Kathy. Boss has been calling you. Wants to see you right away. So she got to him already. What happened? Here. I'll tell you later if I'm still gainfully employed. Sit down. We're in trouble. Yeah, that's what I thought. But Good look, morning. Man, I can't it... find a thing. You know a writer named Celeste Saunders? Sure. I used to work with her on World Magazine in New York. Well, they're sending her out here to do an article, one of her personality profiles. Now, where's that wire? Well, anyway, she requests you be assigned to a sister. So that's why you wanted to see me? Now, this Saunders dame is unpredictable. She... What are you smiling about? Oh, nothing. Look, Harry, this is touchy. If she likes Kathy, it can be a nice break for us. If she doesn't, chop liver. This is on O'Rourke? You're kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure I am. It's going to be a two-part article. Ha! Here's a wire. Request my good friend Harry Johnson be assigned to assist me, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, no, Matt. I don't get along with O'Rourke. I just had a row with her. Oh, who hasn't? Anything else? Yes, I like to sleep nights. So do I, and I don't want to wake up looking for the wanted. Now, you hear me good. The grocers on Kathy's pictures pay our salaries. We're here to protect her from hatchet jobs. But I can't tell Celeste what to write. Did you see the piece she did on Grace in Europe? Yeah, it was poison. But she's flying out here now. What can I do? Have her shot down. Oh, will you stop with the jokes? Her magazine has five million circulation. Now, you find out what her angle is. You've got to convince her O'Rourke's a sweet, normal kid. And that ulcers are good for you. Well, she checks in the Beverly Hills Hotel at 8 tonight. You be there and charm the pants off of her. Oh, sure. What a time I picked to give up smoking. Well, she calls you a good friend. Sure she does. She divorced me 12 years ago.
always have to eat all over the house? Who's gonna buy a bone new bike? When I get good and ready, does he think I paid $20 so the whole neighborhood can scrawl on that cement like Grauman's Chinese? All right, take the cake out of here. I couldn't get a sitter this late. Bring Celeste back here. Who's Celeste? She's one of Dad's wives, stupid. How many did you have, Dad? Would you leave me alone? I'm late and I'd like a little privacy. You heard him. Why don't you get out of here so we can talk? Oh, shut up. Bo, your father would have told you about it before, but it just never came up. Well, Tommy knew about it. Nobody tells me nothing. It happened before you were born, stupid. All right, that's enough. Now, all of you, clear out of here. It's not important, darling. It happens quite often. Your father and Celeste didn't get along. So he divorced her and he married me. Why didn't they get along? Helen, can't we talk about this some other time? All right, boys, don't bother your father. This is a very special occasion. Your cologne is on the top shelf, Bluebeard. What'd you fight with her about? You again? You gonna bring her back here? What? Oh. You mean Miss Saunders? Yes, I might. Now, don't ask her a lot of questions about... What? Bo. Come here. Son, this all happened a long, long time ago. It's all over. You understand, don't you? Okay. We're good friends now, this lady and I. And she's a good friend of your mother's. Okay. As a matter of fact, she introduced me to your mother. They shared an apartment together. Well, why didn't you marry Mom first? Well, I didn't know her first. You see, I didn't meet her till I came back from the Army. Okay. Did you kill anybody in the Army? No. No, I didn't, Bo. I'm sorry about riding on the walk. Can I have a piece of that can you hid? Sure you can. It's in the living room back of the bookcase. Oh, dumb. Finished the dishes already? No, but I started worrying about what I ought to wear tonight. Bo sure gave me the third degree. Those great big eyes and that nosy little mind. I'm glad. About his mind, I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to explain, though, the way she wished you on me. If I were you, I'd rephrase that, Buster. Oh, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm, I know what you mean. Do you know what you mean? I wonder why Celeste never married again. Well, who's important enough for her? The president already has a wife. Now, don't be unpleasant to her. You know, she had quite a few regrets when she left you. Remember, I lived with her after the divorce. And there were certain things that she missed. And you know how uninhibited Celeste can be when she talks about certain things. She said that you... Were... Helen, you're being indecent. Run along, sweetie. I'll see you both later. She wants you back. She's going to have to throw in a shortstop and a pitcher. Celeste. Come in. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's been such a long time. You haven't changed one bit. You look great. You look just great. Careful, I might believe you. You know, uh, you're still pretty jazzy looking yourself. Yeah. How's Helen? Marvelous. She wants me to bring you back for a drink. Oh, I'd love to, but not tonight. I'm bushed. And my ears are still ringing. Oh, you have some rough weather? No. I sat next to a windy congressman out investigating government spending. He wound up his cross-country speech with the motion that I go on to Hawaii with him tomorrow. That's probably him now checking on your vote. Hello? Tell him I'm not in. Would you like a drink? I'm on a very liquid expense account. Yeah, I... 
That thing's a built-in filibuster. Should we listen to it from the bar? It's got my vote. I took this one on a fishing boat last summer. Who's that? That's Tommy, with a little girl he met on board. Darling, you still shouldn't be allowed around a camera. I could have sworn she was a flounder. <laughs> Is that somebody climbing the railing? Yeah, Bobo. He's the only thing I caught all day. <laughs> He's a character. Now, relax. Helen was always very understanding. She's a wife now. Pretty happy with him, aren't you? Sure. It's a package deal. Now you're supposed to ask about me. Don't have to. I read faces. You've really made it. You've worked hard. You have a lot to be proud of. Thanks, Dad. But aren't I entitled to a few regrets? Nope, you're not. You were right. You weren't cut out for the suburban housewife bit. It's wonderful how tolerant we are of each other after 12 years. I might even give you those children you wanted. I'd keep them in the office and water them once a week. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Harry. Old wife, the feeling is mutual. Say, uh, this story on Kathy O'Rourke, what's your angle? No, no, that expense account, remember? What is your angle? Angle? No angle. She can't possibly be as bad as I've heard. Darling, you look tired all of a sudden. Drink up, huh? I guess I should have called. She was too tired to drive out, so we had a few drinks in the lounge. I didn't realize it was so late. Helen? Look, I'm sorry. You got a right to be mad. So I'll go ahead and You mean it would help if I yelled at you? It might. I'm in trouble, real trouble on this O'Rourke thing. It could cost me my job. Yeah, Matt Williams passed a buck. The studio will blame me if Celeste clobbers that kid. Did she say what she was going to write? She said nothing. Almost nothing. And that's what scares me. I know her. Well, worrying won't help. What about Kathy's aunt? Maybe she can help. Not from what I've seen. Well, then talk to Kathy. That little freak won't listen to anyone. Well, she might if you were honest with her. You should know that from your own kids. She's not a kid. She's an actress. Oh, Harry, she's ten years old. Thank you, Dr. Freud. Well, I'll try. How, uh... How was Celeste? Still as pretty? Yeah, I guess so. You look tired. You better get to bed. That's the second time tonight I've been told I look tired. And I am. Tired. I'm getting ahead in the world. Did your last make you feel this way? No, it's just me. Happy Harry. What's wrong? We've been together a long time. I know when you really mean it. Care to try again? All right. So I was somewhere else, thinking about how it's gonna be to take guff from a brat I can't stomach. That's only part of it. Celeste did upset you, whether you admit it to yourself or not. Now, don't look that way, it's true. 
You're entitled to feelings. You're flesh and blood. And she was once very close to you. Only see it for what it is. You're crazy. She's just an old friend. Old wives sometimes have a way of being more than old friends. Whatever it is, not today. I'm waiting for school to let out. Shoo, shoo, Harry, baby. Can't. I'm assigned to her now. <laughs> what did you do? Burn down the executive building? Ready for Miss O'Rourke. These are all correct, Kathy. Very good. They want me on the set. Okay, reach for your gun. What do you want? Oh, nothing much. You're lying. Maybe I want to apologize for trying to trick you yesterday. Well, are you going to? Okay, I'm sorry. Why are you trying to be nice to me? Maybe it's because I like you. You don't like me. Kathy, maybe it isn't you I don't like, but the way you are. Well, I don't like you either. Fine. Isn't it nice hating each other? You're making fun of me. No, I'm not. I'm trying to help you. There's a lady here from New York who's going to write something about you, and I just want you to be pleasant to her, that's all. Well, I won't be. But, Kathy, this is important. We don't want her to write bad things about you. I don't care. I don't think you could fool her anyway. She's too smart. She'd see through you like cellophane. Then why did you ask me? All right, I needed a favor, but you wouldn't understand that. The only thing you might understand is a good walloping. Ha, ha. Hey! Maybe I'll do it. If you do something for me. If I can. What do you want? I don't want anything. It's what I don't want. I don't want to be in that Christmas parade. Why not? I said I don't want to, that's all. Okay, okay, but this is going to be televised coast to coast. It's a big deal. How can I get you out of it? Aunt Harriet can. Make her talk to the studio. All right. I'll try. But if I do get you off, do we have a deal? A bargain? I said so, didn't I? So this is where she lives. It's only a block from my hotel. We had it moved for you. The kid drives this? No, it belongs to the gardener. Come place. Can I get in without my library card? Why don't you be sweet and forget all the rumors you've heard? Judge Kathy for yourself. You know, that's just what I had in mind. I'm Harry Johnson, we're expected. Yes, come right in. Homey, isn't it? What time do they have the changing of the guard? Please tell them we're here. Yes, sir. So far, I'm impressed. The wee one spends her money wisely. She does own this tenement, doesn't she? Hey, where are you going? This isn't polite, you know. It's snooping. Isn't this cute? What does she have to play with? Would you take it easy? These are gifts. People are always sending her things. Really? I'd like to see the package that came in. Celeste, she's a movie star. She's expected to live in a certain way. Hello, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Kathy will be right down. This is Miss Burton, Kathy's aunt, Miss Saunders. How, How do you do, Miss Burton? Can I get you something? A drink, tea, coffee? Uh, no, thank you. 
Now, Miss Saunders, I want you to feel free to ask Kathy anything you like. She's been on rather a difficult shooting schedule lately, so if she seems a little flippity, I know you'll understand. Of course. And I always request press people not to ask her about her mother and father. They were killed in an auto accident five years ago. Yes, I know. I uh, saw your sister on the stage in New York many times. She was quite wonderful. Yes, wasn't she? She was loved by so many people. Kathy has that same quality, Miss Saunders. People who don't even know her, people from all over the world, love her. They write such sweet letters. Well, here she is. Hello. Kathy, and this is Miss Saunders. How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you. I was just making a dress for my doll. May I see it? Did you do this? Yes. It's all finished except for the hem. Can you sew? Not this well. I'd like to see you do it. You would? Kathy, we haven't much time, and Celeste has a lot of questions to ask you. Oh, that's all right. Would you show me? Yes, if you really want me to. Come on. Can she really sew? Oh, yes, yeah, she learned it for a part in a picture. Well, all Celeste needs is one phony routine, and we're stone cold dead in the marketplace. Next time, warn me. The sewing idea wasn't mine, Mr. Johnson. It was Kathy's. Oh, did you tell the studio she wasn't going to be in the Christmas parade? No, not yet. But I've told Kathy. You'd think she'd hate disappointing all those children who are expecting to see her. But it's the only way she'd cooperate. If you need me, I'll be upstairs. Of course, the hardest is embroidery. You have to double stitch all that. This is easy, see? Mm hmm. Do you like uh, acting as well as you like sewing? Well, how's it going? Well, fine, Mr. Johnson. Sometimes I like acting as much. Why only sometimes? Well, sometimes it's just hard work. Most of the time it's fun. And everybody's so nice to work with. I have more than other children. I guess I'm very lucky. How do you like it, Mr. Johnson? Awfully good. Can't you stay for dinner? I'll ask Aunt Harriet. Oh, I'd love to, but I'm going to Harry's house for dinner. Will you be back tomorrow? I'm not working. All right. I'll see you in the morning. Hmm? Say goodbye to your aunt for us, hmm? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Bye, Celeste. Goodbye. Gosh, I'm starved. We have to pick up a tree on the way home. Well, what'd you think of her? I think she's sweet. Harry, I'm a little worried about meeting your kids for the first time. Oh, I've told them about you. No. What'll I say? You'll be fine. Just treat them like drunks. <laughs> you sure did great with Kathy. You see, you just can't believe Hollywood scuttlebutt. I don't quite believe her either. I think she's acting. Just once, I'd like to come home without running into a barricade. Sit still, Dad. Save your strength for the woodshed. Come on, I'll show them to you. My goodness, it's a long Careful now. Did you meet Miss Saunders? She can live here? No. She's just here to eat dinner, and I want her to eat it in peace. Now, that means no questions. Not a single one. You both understand? All right. Well, let's get this thing inside. Both you eaten yet? No, they got company. One of Mr. Johnson's wives. You knew your mother and I lived together in New York, hmm? And can you believe it? Chris Cooper is now a managing editor. Oh, no, not that idiot who used to sleep on our couch in Bum Bagels for breakfast. <laughs> Why not? They're making Celeste feature editor in January. Well, darling, that's wonderful. Not bad for a girl who got her start doing legwork for me. No, no, no. Did your mother ever tell you what fun we had together in New York? 
Have uh, you been having a good time on your Christmas vacation? What have you been doing? What's the matter with you two? You haven't said a word all evening. Well, go on, say something. Dad, can we be excused? Yeah, I guess Celeste will excuse you. Of course. Wait a minute. Can I see that cap? Baseball, hmm? Is that the name of your team? Yeah, Los Angeles Angels. He's in the knothole gang. Oh, wonderful. I'm a giant fan. Very rare birds. Have you heard of the giant? Well, go on, ask me something. I'd like to show off a little. Well, go ahead, Bo. Yeah, go ahead. When you was married to Dad, what did you find about? <laughs> <laughs> your kids are marvelous, Harry. Yeah. Helen's done a great job. I knew she would. You haven't paid off. Paid off? Well, I was the matchmaker. Who have you ever found for me? Oh, uh, I guess you're right. Should I get out and look? <laughs> Probably do better than I have. Find me someone with your sense of humor, Ducky. And no actors. I've had it with egos bigger than mine. Oh, the lights are lovely. Look, look. If I do, we'll wind up being sold for junk. Well, stop the car. I want to make like a tourist. A little background music, sir. I wish I could stay a while, but I have a deadline on the O'Rourke story. Got to get back. I could use a little in New York. You don't miss it. If you did, you'd give it another whirl. I'd like to see a little snow again. Want me to put in a pitch for you? Send me a snowball. Still haven't weakened? Can't. Made Helen a bet. Let's not talk about her either, hmm? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to start anything. But, uh, I do envy her a little, you know. You mean me? Men. What does that mean? It means I envy Helen those kids. A man could never feel the same about something that's alive and part of you. I don't like talking like this. But if I didn't talk to somebody, I'd talk to myself. I'm a, I'm a slob. Forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. You're wonderful, Harry. You have the awful habit of being kind at exactly the right time. You're not going to give up booze, too, are you? No. I mean, I kept. Why do you always slam doors? I nearly got conked on the head. Oh, there you are. Well, you're home early. Did you tuck her in? Yeah, right in the lobby. What are you doing? Checking the lights. Bo and Celeste got them all tangled up. Think she had a good time? Yeah, I guess so. What'd she say? Oh, nothing much. Tree looks great, doesn't it? What did she say? Hmm? Oh, she did say she liked the kids. Uh-huh. And she said there was an opening for a promotion executive on a magazine. Pays almost twice what I'm making. Oh, I see. She's been working on you, hasn't she? Oh, you don't have to tell me. I know her. She's still a very unhappy girl. And she needs to make you feel that you've missed something because you didn't have her kind of ambition. Don't let her, Harry. Harry? There's nothing like cold milk. What's the matter? You're sweet. You're a dope. 
but you're sweet. Here. How would you like to go back to New York? That's what I thought you said. Look, if I did take it, it'd be for all of us, for you. Good morning. Hasn't Miss Saunders arrived yet? Well, yes, she and Kathy just left. Left? Why on earth did you let them? Miss Saunders distinctly said you thought it'd be nice if they spent the day together alone. But I don't want them alone for a fifth of a second. She'll twist Kathy into knots. Where did they go? Well, I haven't any idea. Have you got a cigarette? Right, Kathy. This is one place where you won't be mobbed. It was nice of Mr. Johnson to let us go out alone, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. Why is he throwing the bait away? Maybe it isn't any good. No, young lady. It's to attract fish. What fish? You never get nothing on these half-day boats. Well, I've caught halibut here. Halibut? Yeah. What halibut? Not this time of year. Watch your line there. You're going to tangle us. I'm sorry. It's the first time we fished. My luck. I always get next to this kind of... Hey, kid, look, if you pull up, don't hook me. If she does, she'll throw you back. Gee, this is fun. I hope I get a bite. What bite? We're not gonna get nothing today. A halibut, he caught. They're all in Florida for the winter. Well, tell them to come home. I'm ready. Didn't you ever fish when you were little? No, I'm afraid not. Where did you live? In Boston. With my grandmother. Where's the fish? They know we're here. Well, where were your parents? They were divorced when I was eight. Oh. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Please watch your pole. I've got brand new line. I'm sorry. No, I, I was an only child. Brand new line. For what he's going to catch, he could have brought a needle and thread. Didn't your parents come and visit you? Of course, whenever they could. Hey, what are you coming for, Skipper? Sea bass. Sea bass. Meet a dreamer. You want in? What's it for, Captain? It's a pool. A dollar a piece, the largest fish wins the jackpot. What fish? The whole ocean is empty. Hey, let's do it. I haven't got any money, but I'll pay you back. OK. Oh! Um, I got it. Hold it. Oh, I'm oh, nice. got one. Oh, oh, no. I got it. Oh, I got it. I got a monster. Look. Oh, 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 Looks like it's between these two, and that's it. 
Yeah, the one I lost would have made them both look like sardines. The jackpot. Mine wins the jackpot. Oh, I was sure ours was bigger. Bigger? My fish could have eaten them both for breakfast. Oh, oh boy, you got a beauty. Ours is the cutest. All right. Well, lucky me. Well, at least he came in second. What should we call him? How about Sylvester? <laughs> okay. Hey, maybe I could stuff him and keep him in my dressing room. You know, I've never had so much fun in my whole life. Me either. You know something? I have the funniest feeling. It's like I knew you when you were little. Never mind. I've been worried sick. Where have you been? I'll go tell Aunt Harriet you're staying for dinner. Okay. <laughs> you pulled a fast shuffle on me. Now, Sylvester, mind your manners. Mustn't sit in the presence of ladies. Now, look, I want to tell you that when <laughs> I left... I beat. Well, we had a ball. She's a doll when you get to know her. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, I told you. <laughs> no, you didn't. You don't really know her. But you should. You'd be crazy about her. Oh, I, I think I'll give him up again. I understand you're staying for dinner. We'd be delighted. If it's not too much trouble. Of course not. Come, I'll show you where to tidy up. I'll find a place for him. Maybe he can eat with us. <laughs> Kathy. I'm glad you and Celeste got along so well that you got to like each other. I guess I was wrong in asking you to put on an act for her. Who says I didn't? A bargain's a bargain. His wife, Ellie, she handles most of his coffee anyway. Okay, Ben, see you later. I understand Celeste is leaving. Yeah, 11 tonight. You've done a great job, Harry. Not me. The kid's been giving an Academy Award performance. She's in there with Celeste now, playing her farewell scene. Mm, I hate missing it. <laughs> Probably a combination of Little Eva and East Lynn. Before Celeste leaves, bring her over to the office for a drink. Okay. Hold still. A writer, I'm not a bad wardrobe lady, huh? Oh, you're wonderful. Turn around. Let me take a look at you. Kathy. I miss you, Celeste. I miss you too, Brett. Kathy, if you ever need anything or want anything, you'll let me know, okay? Please don't go. I have to, sweet. When you come to New York, you'll stay with me, all right? We'll do lots of things together. What would you like to do? I don't know. Well, at least we won't have anything with this darn smog. Ready for Miss O'Rourke. Matt wants us to drive by the office for a drink. I think I'll skip it, Harry. Thank you for me. Hmm? Okay, this is the take. Lock him up. I would like your company. Come to the hotel okay. before until takeoff time. Hmm? I'd like to, but tomorrow's Christmas Eve and Helen's shopping tonight. I have to stay with the kids. Rolling. All right, Kathy. Action. But I'm allowed to go in there. My father said I could. Honestly, you've got to believe me. 
Harry, I just can't go to that hotel alone. I just can't. Please try and understand. I've got no, butterflies. No, you can't. I... But I have to. I promise I won't be long. I just have to get something. Cut! Print it. Couldn't you call Helen and explain? No, I can't do that, but... Well, maybe I can get Ben to stay with the kids. You go ahead. I'll meet you at the hotel. been a lady wrestler. I'll bet you could use one of these. If I can put my feet in it. How've the kids been? Oh, they've been wonderful. They haven't moved. They've been mesmerized by the Christmas parade. As we near the end of this Christmas parade, ladies and gentlemen, I think the thousands gathered here tonight and all of you at home will agree that it has been one of the yeah. most beautiful spectacles. This will barbecue your bunions. Now, you were dull to sit with the kids, Dan. I still don't understand why Harry had to go to the O'Rourke. Well, he must have had a good reason. Well, why couldn't Celeste say goodbye to Kathy alone? They were getting along fine. Oh, come on, come on. Down the hatch, down the hatch. And there she is, Kathy O'Rourke, approaching our cameras now, the queen of this year's Hollywood Christmas Parade. Listen to that crowd as they see Kathy. How they love this little girl. Seated up front is Mr. Donald Faber, head of Western National Studios, and Kathy's aunt, Miss Harriet Burton. Little Kathy has been very patient during this long two-hour parade down this fabulous boulevard on the night that Hollywood wishes you a Merry Christmas. So, we had to go to Kathy's house. It's almost nine. I'm starved. All packed. That helped. You're a nice man. Just one more and I'll jump in the shower and change. All right. You mix good for what ails me. What's in it? Everything. It's one of my old walk up three flights, fall down four fizzes. I thought you remembered. The 81st Street apartment. I remember. Harry, why don't we eat up here? Harry? I heard you. It would save me rushing. I ought to be around anyway. My publisher's calling tonight about Kathy's article. Oh? Don't worry, you'll like it. You don't mind eating up here, do you? No, not if you want to. Fine, sweetie. By the way, if you're interested in that promotion job I told you about, I could break the ice tonight. Well, I haven't discussed it fully with Helen yet. Oh? Darling, you should. You have too much on the ball to worry about who's writing what about which movie star. I mean, you could be doing really important things on the magazine. Besides, there's an awful lot you're missing by not being in New York. Yeah. Why don't you call for a menu while I wash away my sins and smog? Hmm? Hello? Who's this? Is that you, Kathy? Hello. Harry Johnson? She's in the shower. No, I'm not lying. Kathy, what's the matter? No, I told you she was in the shower. Now tell me what's the matter. Wait a minute, you can't do that. You... Kathy? Kathy? Celeste, I'll be back. Go to dinner. Harry? What did
Now, don't try to get away. I'm going to Celeste. Now, just calm down and we'll talk about it. I won't talk to you. Look, this whole area is patrolled. Any minute now, a police car will come along. You want them to take you home? All right. Now, let's talk in the car. Never mind. I'll take it. right there. Now, what's all this about? You can trust me. Your aunt's probably missed you by now. She'll be very worried. I don't care. Why did you run away? I don't want to talk to you. Now take me to Celeste. I can't do that. You better. She said I could see her any time I wanted to. I don't care what she said. Please take me to her, Mr. Johnson. You've just got to. Please. Come on, let's not start acting. I'm gonna take you home. I won't go back there. If you take me, I'll run away again. I'll find her. I have to. And when I do, I'm gonna tell her what you made me do. I'm gonna tell her everything. So stay tuned to this Boy. station for any further bulletin and for our regular news broadcast on the hour, Listen. every hour. Can't you hear me? Now, back to the adventure of David Spear, jungle geologist. Now, I told you to shut that thing off and get to bed. Into the unexplored headhunter territory. Well, come on, the come on, on the double. double. So, you finally... Not now, Helen. Harry, what on earth? Kathy, this is my wife. It's her. But they just said she was kidnapped. What? Yeah, just on TV. Kidnapped? All right, all right, that's, that's enough. Um, come on, Kathy. Uh, boys, uh, you two, give her some cake and a glass of milk. Come on. Give me that. Harry, do you realize that they're turning this town upside down looking for that child? Please, I'm trying to dial. Where did you find her? Near the Beverly Hills Hotel. Whose residence? Harry. No, I've got the wrong number. Harry? Will you leave me alone? I'm trying to get her in. Why did you bring her here? I had to. She ran away. She saw about something and wanted to see Celeste and blabbed the whole thing. I don't want any. Leave me alone. It's, uh, it's all right, Kathy. You don't have to drink it. Now just sit over here and relax. Helen! Helen! I can't get through. The line is busy. I know. I'll call the police. Harry, put down that phone. Put it down. Just be calm for a moment. That child is very upset. She's upset. Do you want this whole house crawling with police, reporters, detectives, an hysterical child, and you? Well, what am I going to do? I don't know. Let me think. I'll try the ant again. No, I wouldn't do that either. You might not get her. You probably get a cop. Level off, will you? Have, have a cigarette or something. Now I'm too nervous to smoke. Just stand still. Why don't you go to the O'Rourke house and, and uh, get the aunt alone? Tell her what happened. Then she can get rid of whoever is there and come and get Kathy quietly. Yeah. Maybe. All right. But don't let her out of your sight. Don't trust her. She's rough. All right, boys, let's get to bed. She don't want no cake, either. She was kidnapped, all right. She won't even talk. All right, you heard me. Come on. Good night, Kathy. Well, you've had quite an experience. I'll bet you're tired. You sure you don't want any cake? It's awfully good. Where did Mr. Johnson go? He went to see your aunt. I won't go back there. I know. You want to go to Celeste? Tell me why. I just do. All right. Maybe I don't blame you. You see, I know Celeste. We lived together in New York. 
You don't believe me, do you? Wait a minute, I want to show you something. Come here, Kathy. Here's one of Celeste and me taken in Central Park. Oh, <laughs> this one's inside our apartment. Not very good. Oh, this one's not bad of her. I like Celeste. We were good friends. I had fun with her. You had fun with her, too, didn't you? She's quite a girl. If I thought it would help, I might even take you to her. I know she's very fond of you. She's the only one. Oh, now I'm sure she's not the only one. She's the only one. And I'm going away with her. To New York. Kathy, she has a job in New York. She has to work all day. She wouldn't have time to take care of you. Yes, she would. Oh, Kathy, you've made such a good start having somebody who likes you so much. There'll be others. I don't want them. Just her. Started out acting like Mr. Johnson told me to. Then she... I can't help it. I just love her. I know. No, you don't. Maybe I don't. But I do know your aunt must be terribly upset by now. She made me be in that Christmas parade. She promised. And she made me go. So I won't go home. I won't. Kathy, sometimes grown-ups break promises. They shouldn't, but they do. I've done it myself. You don't know. You just don't know. She doesn't care about me. She's afraid of Mr. Faber. That's why she made me go. He's important. I have to be nice to people who are important. She... She doesn't like me. She never has. I don't have any friends. Just Celeste. I'm so lonely. Oh, Kathy. <laughs> oh, Kathy. <laughs> I don't know. Watch out for the people. Hey, Jim, give me some more slack. And who do you have to know to get in here? The governor? Who are you? Johnson, Western National Studios. Okay. Come on, give us a place. Hey, come on, listen. Well, like I told you, I just peeked in to see if she was asleep, and the window was open. Now, what'd you do then? Well, I came down and told Miss Harriet. Came right down and told Miss Harriet. How long you worked with this one? Well, now, let me see, I think. <laughs> Miss Harriet, not now, please. But I have to talk to please her. Please, leave me alone. <laughs> what was that all about, and who are you? Harry Johnson. I'm from uh, Studio Publicity. Oh, oh, publicity, huh? What do you mean by that, Lieutenant? Oh, nothing, except that by tomorrow, this story will push Santa Claus off of every front page in the country. You think this is a publicity stunt? I didn't say that, Mr. Faber. Now, you get this, Chavez. If anybody in publicity is connected with this in any way, no matter how or why, they'll be fired immediately and never work in my studio again. The district attorney will make sure they never work anywhere again. Yes, Johnson, what did you want? Nothing. Uh, I just thought there was something I could do. You can take care of those reporters outside and tell them the studio is offering a $50,000 reward for Kathy's safe return. They just said on the radio that she's still missing. Be quiet. Not out here. I didn't tell again. I couldn't. They'd have me on a kidnapping rap. And if that didn't stick, Faber would fire me. Now, don't get excited. I'm not. I'll get you a drink. I don't want a drink. 
Listen, I think I have a way out. We'll have Celeste come and get her. She'll do it. It's a great yarn for her. She'll say that Kathy's been with her all this time, and I'll make a deal with the kid to stick to the story. More deals, Harry. Do you know that her aunt made her go to that Christmas parade? Oh. So that's why she was sore. Sore? Oh, not like you think. That woman treats her like she was an investment. Drags her to parties. Makes her perform. So much attention for Mr. So-and-so. He's important. A little less for Mr. So-and-so. He's not so important. I could hear the chains rattle. So she snowed you, too. Harry, I don't like listening to a 10-year-old cry because she's a property. Because she's loved by millions and not really loved by anyone. Because she knows her only value to grown-ups is her talent and not what she feels in her heart. Because you can't photograph a heart. Helen, she's an actress. Quite an actress. She wasn't acting. Come here. Beau gave her his bunk. So? You'd have been proud of them, Harry. It took a little time, but they got to her. They made her feel like she belonged here. Well, she doesn't. Let her stay just for tonight. Are you crazy? Maybe I am a little. But she's had such a rotten day. She deserves one peaceful night's rest. I'm so beat, I can't think. I know you don't believe Kathy, but you still can't take her to Celeste. Why not? She likes the kid. More than a sensational story like this? Well, she won't pick on her. She'll clobber the aunt. Harry, no matter how she writes it, it'll make it worse for Kathy. Child welfare societies would have to step in. She'd be pawed and pitied and dragged through the courts. She'd be put in a spotlight that could burn her for the rest of her life. All I know is I've got to get off the hook. Hello? Oh, Celeste. No, he isn't. Wait a minute, that may be his car now. Well, Harry? Tell her I'm not here. Thanks. Celeste, I'm sorry it was the car next door. No, I haven't heard anything. Celeste? Funny, she hung up on me. She must be upset. I must be nuts. Now, you two know you're not supposed to chase on the bunks. Get washed for breakfast. Is she going to stay here? You heard me. Get in there. But she wants to. Come on, go on. We'd love to have you stay, dear. But it would get us all in a lot of trouble. You understand, don't you? Now, Mr. Johnson is going to drop you off near your house. I want you to go straight home. And don't tell anyone where you've been. All right. Kathy, I want you to know that you're welcome here any time that you can come. She won't let me. Well, we'll try to work something out. Can Bo come out? No. Uh, no, he can't, Chuck. He's sick. A cold. He's got a cold. Now, 
All of you go play someplace else. Gosh, how am I going to get her out of here? The street is swarming with kids. It's Christmas vacation, Harry. But do they have to celebrate it in front of our house? Harry, maybe, maybe it isn't such a good idea to take her home in broad daylight. If somebody sees now, you... Now, stop that. Tommy, get dressed and chase those kids away from here. Why don't you take her back tonight when the cops can't see so good? He's right, Harry. But I can't let her out on the street alone at night. It's not safe. Well, you could take me to the studio. I could say I ran away and hid there. Well, that's not a bad idea. Nobody goes to the studio Christmas Eve. I check in. When I drive out, Kathy's discovered. Chavez had put two and two together faster than you can say jail. I know. Sneak her in. What? Sure. There's a place way out in the back, near the riverboat set. You just climb over the fence. Me and Bill You've been sneaking on a lot again. Don't you know you could get me in all kinds of trouble? If you it ever... It could work, Harry. Especially if you're back here at home when they find Kathy. Please, let me think. You're going to be late to work. No, I can't be. All right. We'll try it tonight. Hey! Wait a minute. Helen, for Pete's sake, keep an eye on her. Don't let her out. And don't let anybody in. We haven't heard a thing, Pete. Okay, sure I will. Oh, really? Well, when did that happen? Yeah, okay, you bet. Hey, that was the UP office. The cops are searching the hills and back of Beverly, and the governor may send out the National Guard to set up roadblocks. Imagine trying to hide that kid. It's like trying to hide the president. Hello? Yeah, I'll hold on. It was a stinking trick last night. You know how I heard about Kathy? My boss told me. He called me just as I was leaving for the plane. I'm sorry. Never mind. Have they heard anything? No. Nothing. Uh, no, nothing new. Nothing new, Harrison. Take it easy. They'll find her. I can't. I love that kid. That's the devil of it. I know. You know, I was wrong getting so sore at you. You were just doing your job. Can I buy you lunch? Well, I don't know if I can get away. These phones have been going crazy. You know? I don't think that kid's really been snatched. Well, no ransom notes, no calls for dough yet. Besides, they'd have brought it back by now. Who could stand Ben. That? Uh, ben, when you take my phone for a while, we're going to lunch. Thanks, Ben. Hold it, Johnson. I want to talk to you. When you get a table in the commissary, I'll be right over. Sure. How well did you know the Aurora kid? Not very well. Why? Yeah, we were checking everybody that worked with her. How about you? For me? Oh, I've stayed clear of it. Don't you guys have any leads? Mostly cranks. And we'll be out all night chasing them down like Keystone cops. What a way to spend Christmas Eve. A guy from Variety said you had a hot tip from a maid in Beverly Hills. Hot tip? She says she saw a kid get into a 56 green convertible in front of her house last night. You know how many cars there are like that in this town, mister? Count them sometime. <laughs> Harry Johnson? Yeah. It's for you, Lieutenant. Yeah? Yeah? You got a 56 screen convertible, Harry? Come on, why don't you come clean? Very funny. Well, how do I know if it's another crank or not? All right, I'll meet you there. Now, somebody reports now they saw the kid playing in a backyard in North Hollywood. Charming, isn't he? Hello? Oh, hello, Army. No, nothing new. No, we haven't heard a thing. Well, if anything turns up, I'll let you know. Hello, hello. Where is she? Now, calm down. She's in the kids' room, playing. Go and see. What on earth? We disguised her, so if anybody comes in, they won't even recognize her. She looks like Chuck now. Oh, no, how could you? Oh, I hate pigtails anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, so far, only tips from cranks. Hello? Hello? 
Helen, is anything wrong? Where is she? She's inside, like I said. Well, what took you so long? Well, I was admiring her pigtails. Helen, this is no time to joke. I'll see you tonight. Well, the cops are up a tree. Yeah, okay. Hi, Dad. Where's Kathy? She didn't help in boss at the table. Hi, Bo. Where's... Hello, Mr. Johnson. What happened to you? Helen? Helen? Her hair. The pigtails. I thought there was something wrong. You scared me to death. Wrong? Who cut her hair? The boys. But you should have seen it before I trimmed it. Do you realize she's in the middle of a picture? Well, they were just trying to camouflage her. I want wine. I'll fix you a drink. I'll camouflage them. Those pigtails are her trademark, like Gable's ears, Cary Grant's dimple, Marilyn Monroe's... their money. So your sons are expensive barbers. What's the use? Now, you listen to me. As soon as it's dark enough, I've got to get her out of here and into the studio and no more slip-ups. Harry, please start smoking again. Ghost is clear. What's that? Sandwiches, in case she gets hungry on a lot. She just had dinner. She didn't eat very much. Well, I guess that's the way you were. Did you have a hat? Mm -mm. You won't be cold, will you? Oh, I can't, Bo. It's your favorite. Ah, oh, you take it. Okay, we better get going. Carolers. Helen, get rid of them. But we always ask them in and give them a little something. But we can't let anybody in. Give it to them outside. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Merry Christmas, Robin. Jack. Merry Christmas. Oh, I did miss somebody. I'm sorry. Happy holiday, children. I think you better run along now. It's late. Hey, what is this? Christmas Eve? Well, Ben. Hi. Hiya, Bo. Hiya, Tommy. Here's the bachelor with the boodle. Yes. Wait a minute. Harry, it's Ben. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Huh? I just did. You call that a kiss? Harry, it's Ben. Come on, fellas. Here. Here you are, fellas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and put it under the tree. Hello, Ben. Harry. Merry Christmas. Say, what is this? Every Christmas Eve, you put a drink in my hand almost before I come through the door. Come on, make like a host. Yeah, sure. No, no, uh, stay where you are. Sit down. Yes, uh, right over here, Ben. Now, just you relax. Well, this is much better. What a day. What a day. You wouldn't believe it. Yes, Harry told me. Well, come on. Come on, come on. Open the present. Oh, no, no not, not now, Ben. What do you mean, not now? You always open them Christmas Eve. Yes, well, uh, this year we decided to change it. We're going to do it in the morning. Well, I kind of hoped I could open mine tonight. Well, Bo, how do you think your ball club is going to do this year? You know something? If you two boys play your cards right, I'm going to take you both to spring training. But what do you think of that? Why don't you take your presents and go home now? Well, huh? Tommy. You drink all right, Ben? Oh, yeah, it's fine, fine. 
Looks like I'll eat another one. Uh, we're all out. I, uh, I forgot to order. Out? No, you're not. Just open the package I brought. What's wrong around here? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, it's just today, the office, you know. Oh, yeah, O'Rourke. Isn't it just like that little brat to ruin everybody's Christmas? Harry's really had his fill with that spoiled little stinker. I suppose I should feel sorry for her, but, uh, well... Here, take your old present. I don't want it. Bo. Oh. Say, what is this? What did I do? I just no, said... No, I'm sorry, Ben. It's, uh, it's the excitement. I think you better go now. Well, I just Why don't came. you come over tomorrow? Yes, come early. Come well, and have Christmas brunch. I don't us. understand. I... Good night, this, Ben. This seems... Uh, oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Oh, that was awful. Just awful. It's all right. He didn't really mean it. He doesn't know you like we do. Or love you like we do. Well, here we are. I don't know about this. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Johnson. I'll be all right. I've worked here since I was six. Come on. Gee, you better give me a boost. That looks pretty high. Well, I can swing onto that tree. Okay, but be careful. And watch that barbed wire. I will. You got the branch yet? Almost. Got the other one. That's a good one. I'll let yourself down easy. All right? Yeah. Watch it. Remember, watch that clock. It should take me about a half an hour to get home, so stay out of sight till 8. Then walk to the cops at the front gate. You got that? You sure you'll be all right? You'll be able to find your way to the front gate. Of course. You better go now. Kathy, be careful. Mr. Johnson, Merry Christmas. Thank you.
Hey, Joe. He's a kid, about seven or eight. There he goes. Stop, stop. Hey, come back here.
Hold it. Where have you been, Johnson? Well, uh... I told you he was out delivering Christmas. I ask him. Now, just a minute. What are you doing here? I ask you where you've been. Out delivering Christmas presents. Why? Okay, Chandler, if you need me for anything, I'll be at this number. Now, why didn't you tell me you have a green 56 convertible? There are thousands of cars like mine. You said so yourself. And you've got no right to barge in here and upset my family there like this. There are only five cars like yours at the studio. Now, do you mind if I have a look around? Of course he doesn't mind. My husband has been very upset by all this. Come with me, Lieutenant. Did you get her in the studio all right? Yes, now keep still and act natural. I hope she doesn't get scared. It's awful spooky out there. Go someplace, do something. I'd like to take a look at your car now. It's in the garage. All right, kids, come on. Let's go oh, by the way, uh, who did you say you delivered those gifts to tonight? To friends? Yeah, I know, but who? Well, there was. Well, who? Yes? Uh... It's for you, Lieutenant. Yeah. Where? All right, I'll meet you there. They found the O'Rourke kid at the studio. No kidding. That's wonderful. Is it? After turning the country upside down? I'm going to find out how she got there. Zippy! Be quiet. I'm not out of this yet. She might talk. She won't talk, Harry. You're right. Well, I ought to call Celeste. I mean, well, she should be the first to know Kathy's back. Sure, sure. Might also help you to get that job in New York. Didn't you ask her about it last night? Well, I... Harry, maybe I haven't been fair. I've only been thinking about what I want. If you want that job, and can get it? Well, I better start the kids to bed. Well, at least tell us what time you got there last night. All right, then. How did you get in? Who cut off your hair? Where did you sleep, Kathy? Did you walk all the way from here to the studio? Tell us. We must know. Or did somebody take you there? Kathy, will you answer? Lieutenant. Kathy, why don't you just answer the questions? Nobody's gonna hurt you, Kathy. Do we have to do this now? She's wet, she's tired, she needs sleep. And look, I need to know what happened. She might have been kidnapped and scared into clamming up. He's right. I won't have a moment's peace of mind until we do know. We can find out in the morning. Now, why did you run away? All right, then tell me this. Did anybody else know you were there? Look, Kathy, if we left and came back tomorrow, you'd tell us then, wouldn't you? I told you everything. Celeste, you didn't leave. I couldn't, till I knew you were all right. Oh, I'm all right. Only I'm tired. Would you put me to bed? Of course, darling. If nobody minds. Nobody better mind. Now, wait a minute. I'm not through here. I can't answer any more questions. Young lady, take her to bed.
What do you think we ought to tell the newspapers, Mr. Faber? Just keep everybody away from here until things get back to normal. Come on. Only one dress? You didn't plan to be gone very long. That's what they asked me downstairs. I'm not questioning you, honey. I uh, just hope you had fun. It was the most fun I ever had. Except with you. Do I have to brush my teeth tonight? No, not tonight. Come on. Will you stay here with me? Yes, I'll sit here and you get the sleep. Okay. Night, Celeste. Night. sweetie. But I couldn't let Kathy disappoint all those children who were expecting to see her. That doesn't make any difference. We made her a promise. I don't blame her for running away. You don't know that she did. Lieutenant Chavez thinks she was kidnapped. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense. And if I were you, I wouldn't ask Kathy any more questions. Just let her alone. I'll decide that. She's my problem. Are you sure you're not hers? Oh, how is she? She fell asleep almost before she closed her eyes. Well, I guess we can be going now. Before I pick up my jacks and leave, suppose you tell me what's been going on around here. What do you mean? Come on. You know where Kathy was. Both of you know. Well, Celeste, that's ridiculous. Is it? Explain this. Well, Harry. Well, what? Kathy put that under her pillow. Would you mind telling me where she got it? Oh, she probably found it. Kids all over town have these. All with Bo Johnson written inside. Stop throwing curves, Harry. I know she was at your house. Now tell me why. At your house? Is this true? All right, Kathy was with me. I took her to my house last night. Now I know why you wanted me to believe she ran away. This is a matter for the police. Now, just a minute. Wait a minute. Miss Burton. I, uh, think we better talk about this alone. Would you mind, Celeste? You bet I'd mind. You really put me through it these last 24 hours, and I've got a right to know what happened. Come on, why was she at your house? Well, she was a little upset, so I met her and took her there to talk it out, that's all. Why didn't you bring her back here? I got panicky when they said she was kidnapped. Oh. What was Kathy so upset about? All right. I'll find out from Kathy. You can't believe that child. She never tells the truth. What? I mean... Kathy's difficult to handle at times. Being so talented, she's extremely high strung. I should have spent more time with you, Miss Burton. I had no idea that Kathy was such a problem. Well, you see, she doesn't understand. She has certain obligations to the public. If I didn't see they were fulfilled, she wouldn't be where she is. I do the best I can. You have my deepest sympathy. Harry, is she the real reason Kathy ran away? You have no right to talk to me like that. I've Ms. sacrificed... Burton, please let me I've handle this. I've devoted my life to that child. I've given up everything for her career. Oh, shut up. And if you hadn't taken her to your home, none of this would have happened. Now, both of you, get out of here. And you're never to see Kathy again. We'll see her. She'll get to the people she loves. Loves? You think she loves you? She doesn't even know the meaning of the word. It was all an act. She was acting. It was his idea. Go ahead, ask him. And I don't have to tell you why he put her up to it. You know. He made a fool of you. Now write what you please. Was it an act? Well, 
It started out that okay, way. Okay, but... Harry, forget it. But don't just skip see... it. Call me a cab. Hmm? Look, if you write any part of this story, it could really ruin Kathy's life. Get a fiddle, Harry. All right. But I think you ought to know that Kathy called your hotel before I met her. It was you she wanted to talk to. You did tell her to come to you if she's ever in trouble, didn't you? She was in trouble. Sure she was. Okay, don't believe it. And don't waste time trying to figure out what Kathy felt for you. Whether she loved you or not isn't important. You loved her. For the first time in your life, you loved someone more than yourself. The first time that happened to me was you. I guess that's why seeing you again almost threw me. And might have cost me a lot. Here. Don't forget this, Exhibit A. You got a great story now. All you need. Everything. Only it would have been easier to write if you hadn't loved her. Love's a funny thing. It can open up new worlds for people who are not afraid of it. opening their presents. Merry Christmas. Thanks. It's beautiful, Harry. Yeah. Is there with any calls from the studio or anything? It's Christmas. We're not going to worry about that now. Grab your socks and come get your ties. thought you'd need one of these. I had a cozy all-night chat with Aunt Harriet. And she thinks it'd be a good idea if Kathy spent a little more time with your brats. She uh, wants to keep things quiet around her house. Thanks. <clears throat> all right, now take it easy. Now look, come on, last night. Here, here, here. Have a drink. Merry Christmas. Have ten drinks, then. Hey. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 